You're listening to The Larry King Show tonight with Mutual's Dirk Van. And now, back to Dirk. Our guest is Jack Anderson. We go to Austin, Texas for your call. Uh, yes, Mr. Anderson, great pleasure to talk to you. Being from Dallas the day that uh, President Kennedy was killed, I have a, also a unique interest in the assassination. My question is, um, on Oswald's background, I recently read the book by David Skyam, Contract on America. Yes. And his um, portrayal of uh, the mafia uh, background to the whole assassination is certainly something that you conclude with. My question is, how is it possible that Oswald could have moved back and forth between Russia and the United States so easily? And the other question is, uh, with regard to Bobby Kennedy's assassination, do you think it's possible that the mob would have anything to do with his assassination? Well, it's one of the mysteries, uh, how he moved back and forth. Uh, in fact, I talked to Marina Oswald, the widow, and uh, this was one of the things that she couldn't understand, how easy it was for a defector to, to, to just renounce his defection and to come back again without any trouble. Uh, so that's a, a mystery I can't uh, solve for you. And what was the other question? Well, I was... Bobby Kennedy and the mob. Oh, Bobby? No, uh... You know, the, the circumstances were very similar. To, here was a, a misfit who, who uh, shot uh, Robert Kennedy. Robert Kennedy was hated by the mob. Uh, but uh, all of the sources I have, uh, naturally, this was a question I asked them, and I have absolutely no information. They knew nothing about it. Go to Buffalo, New York, for your question. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Jack Anderson, I'm a great fan of your column. Thank you very much. Uh, do you... I. Two questions. Do you know about Ben Bagdikian's book, The Media Monopoly? Well, I haven't read it. I, I respect Ben Bagdikian, and I know him, and I, res I would respect what he writes, but I don't know what he did write, and I haven't read the book. Okay. Can I quote just a short quote from it and see how this goes uh, with your latest book? You have to make it very brief. Okay. Uh, a shrinking number of large media corporations now regard monopoly and historic levels of profit as not only normal, but their earned right. In the process, the usual democratic expectations for the media, diversity of ownership and ideas, have disappeared. When he started, there were 50. In 1982, there were 50 companies that owned most of the media. Now, that by December 1986, it was 29. Six months later, when he wrote an article for media publications, the number is down to 26. And some Wall Street media analysis by 1990... Six giant firms will control most of our media. Does that make it more or less possible? What do you think, Jack? Oh, that's frightening. It's a, it's a menace. On the other hand, I think it could go in the other direction because uh, with the, uh, cable television, uh, there's more and more sources of information. And I think that uh, the monopoly that's now held by a few over the media uh, could very well begin to diversify again. How objective do you think the reporting of the major new news organizations is? Well, this is something I, I know about because I know reporters and uh, the reporters do their own reporting, and there are very few news organizations that tell them what to report or how to write it, including my own. I have reporters who uh, sometimes write stories that I don't like. I still publish them. I publish them because we have a tradition in our business. Palo Alto, California, your question for Jack Anderson. Well, I, I have a comment on the uh, assassination and then uh, a question, uh, which is uh, on a different subject. Uh, Briefly, please. Yes, the, the comment. Uh, your answer as to the... Uh, question which has come up uh, repeatedly. Uh, what is your information connecting uh, Castro and uh, Communist Cuba with the assassination? And it seems that you, you rely on identified sources and, and then on uh, what the CIA uh, allegedly told uh, Lyndon Johnson. And I even if they did tell him that, uh, that doesn't make it true. Uh, Jack, would you respond to that? No, well, I, I'd like to ask a different question, frankly, because it's been discussed. I just wanted to make the observation. But my question on a different subject. Now, I'm sure, I haven't seen your column in recent months uh, due to the paper not uh, carrying it, but I'm sure that, uh, Mr. Anderson, you're aware of the October Surprise Intelligence Operation that was conducted in the Reagan-Bush campaign in 1980. And uh, w w this is, uh, you know, documented fact that they had this operation. The uh, charges which have uh, been coming out recently... Is this a question you're asking? Yeah, uh, here's my question. The, the, the charges coming out recently are connection with uh, contacts with Iranian officials uh, in the... Uh, just prior to the election in 1980, uh, resulting in an agreement to withhold release of the hostages until after the election, and uh, then there were forthwith there were shipments of uh, U.S. arms uh, through Israel within uh, several months. Well, at the time, you've got to remember, Jimmy Carter was president of the United States and, and uh, had access to that kind of information, and if he had been able to, if he had known that... Uh, that uh, Ronald Reagan or anybody representing Ronald Reagan was making a private deal in contradiction of U.S. law, 
because it's against the law for private citizens to act on behalf of the United States and to negotiate on behalf of the United States. If uh, Jim Carter had any information like that, you can be sure he would have used it in his campaign against uh, Ronald Reagan. And Jimmy Carter had the CIA, the FBI, and all government agencies working for him at that time. So I, f I don't find it very credible. I think it's not likely. It's a story, the October surprise thing, that whole deal is something that I personally investigated, and I certainly found no information that uh, supported that thesis. It's a thesis I heard, but it's a thesis that I don't think can be supported. Let me put you on the spot, Jack Anderson. We have a president-elect. Uh, what can we look forward to uh, from George Bush? George Bush is a pragmatic man. He's a little introspective. Uh, he's not going to inspire people. He should be competent, and uh, he should steer the ship of state right down the middle. Uh, he should follow a middle course, because that's where most of the voters are. And George Bush is going to want to be reelected, so he's going to do what uh, he thinks they want him to do. He doesn't have, of course, the charisma of a Ronald Reagan. Is this going to inhibit him or hurt his? Uh, I think I think any president who lacks charisma has to be very competent, because. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a good leader is usually inspirational. George Bush, for that matter, Michael Dukakis, not inspirational. Uh, so, what do you think of Dan Quayle? He had some rough going there. Well, Dan Quayle is is uh, not as bad as he's been portrayed. I've known uh, Dan Quayle. I know his reputation. He's not a man that I would have selected for vice president, uh, but he certainly isn't as bad as he's been portrayed. Uh, I would put him in the middle. Not a bad senator. Not a great senator. Uh, he. Uh, he works at the job. I'll, I'll tell you that much. He does work at the job. He, he's, he's an informed senator. Can we look for uh, Bush to pardon John Poindexter and Oliver North? I wouldn't think so. I think that if uh, a pardon is going to be issued, it would be Ronald Reagan who would be more likely to do it. But I don't think that, uh, I, I can almost say I know that Ronald Reagan isn't going to do it until, at least until they're found guilty of something. And I don't think that uh, he's going to be around when the uh, trial is uh, finally held, if it is held. More questions for Jack Anderson after these messages. You're listening to The Larry King Show tonight with Mutual's Dirt Van. And now, back to Dirt. And our guest, Jack Anderson, with controversial information on the murder of JFK 25 years ago this month. We'll get back to your calls now. We go to Edgewood, Pennsylvania. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, Jack Anderson, I'm sorry I missed your earlier discussion largely, but uh, I'm wondering, have you run across any money trail in connection with the uh, assassination? No. Uh, uh -huh. I uh, once uh, met a man who uh, worked for the uh, CIA, and I have reason to think he really did work for the CIA. And he said that some of the money had been traced back to Pittsburgh. And uh, we have a uh, gang of mobs to Cuba, the Manorino gang here. And, uh, in fact, uh, Manorino's son-in-law worked in the same uh, town uh, that uh, Oswald had worked at West. And there are connections. And I'm wondering, uh, have you run across any connection with that mob? No, there was a, there were reports that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald got a big payment and put it in the bank account, but I I was never able to verify that. Springfield, Massachusetts, hi. Yes, uh, Mr. Anderson, and yeah. due to the fact that uh, Jack Ruby was quite a lot in the picture of the assassination, and while in jail, he begged and begged and begged to be heard, and the Warren Commission refused to hear him. Can you tell us what he had to say? Yes, uh, that that is absolutely the case. Uh, he was afraid of the mob. Uh, he said to uh, Warren Commission that if they would give him protection and take him back to Washington, he'd tell them what they needed to know. He'd tell them something that he couldn't talk about. And uh, the Warren Commission refused to take back, or refused to give him the protection, said, why can't you say it here? And he said, I'll be killed if I say it here. And uh, uh, they never did to give him that opportunity to testify. That is a matter of record. That's where you call Jack. Uh... I guess uh, playing devil's advocate with you for just a second, why not accept the uh, Warren Commission's report and forget about probing the assassination any further? That's just because I believe in accuracy and uh, no other reason. I have no act to grind. Uh, as I told you at the beginning, I really did believe the Warren Commission. I had a lot of faith in Earl Warren. I didn't think he'd be part of the cover-up. No, I... Uh uh, I think uh, history ought to tell the truth. And uh, if I can make a small contribution to getting the truth out, I'd like to do it. How open do you believe the American political system should be? Well, I think it should be wide open unless it's uh, unless it affects uh, security matters. There are some things... Does this, not, uh, does this any longer affect security? Oh, of course not. Mm -hmm. But there are some things for the safety of all of us that, that you don't want to write about or, or broadcast. But the Kennedy assassination 25 years ago? Uh, of course we can... Uh, I can't imagine that there's anything about that that ought not to be known. And I think it should be known, and I think public uh, insists that it should be known, because uh, I, uh, the, the people
people who responded to my telecast where it was just an overwhelming response. And uh, I'd be delighted to have your listeners uh, join in that response or vote against me if they wish. That's Post Office Box 2300, Washington, D.C., 20013. Send it to Jack Anderson? Sure. Jack Anderson, P.O. Box 2300, Washington, D.C., 20013. Now you're a novelist. Um, some fascinating themes in your novel, Control. Uh, you're working on another thriller, as I understand. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's just in the, in the thinking stages. I'm working out a plot. And again, I'm, I'm going to use fiction, a device, to tell, to tell certain truths that are hard to tell in any other way. How do you do it all? You're a syndicated columnist. You're a broadcaster, Pulitzer Prize winner. Oh, I... a novelist. Well, I have a, I have a staff. I have a good staff, and we have a very satisfactory arrangement. They do the work, and I get the credit. <laughs> do you have room for anything else in your career? Well, yes, I'm chairman of the Young Astronaut Council. That's yeah. something I believe deeply in. We're trying to, to help our kids uh, get ready for the space age to understand the high-tech future, the technologies of tomorrow. And I'm co-chairman with Peter Grace of the. Uh, of the ongoing campaign to, to find waste in government and to eliminate that waste. These are both important crusades, and I'm glad to be part of both of them. The JFK assassination, is this one of the bigger projects you've been, you've, uh, been working on? Well, it's one of the major stories. I've spent 20 years on it. There are very few stories that I spent 20 years working on. And uh, it's so hard in a broadcast like this, or even in a two-hour telecast, uh, to reduce the, the fact that you know the, and to explain the credibility of the witnesses that you have and to lay forth the documents in your possession. It's hard to do the uh, take a 20 investigation and try to spell it out in the very short time that we've had. Sure, you can only scratch the surface. Uh, in your career, what is the most exciting or most important uh, investigative reporting you have done? I always hope that it's the story I'm working on. I, I always hope that that's going to be my attitude. But I suppose that this Kennedy assassination was the most difficult to find out that the, that the CIA, which is a tight-lipped organization, had... Uh, retain the mafia, another tight-lipped organization, to knock off Fidel Castro and that the plot had backfired. Now, that's not easy to do. Uh, the, these two organizations just don't talk about their activities. And it took many years to get this information out of them. And uh, But I'm happy to say that uh, a Senate investigation confirmed most of it uh, which is what gives such great credibility to the rest of it. Your findings, though, don't find themselves on the front page of the New York Times or the Washington Post. Quite often. Uh, yeah. Sometimes they get picked up, sometimes case, they don't. But in this case, the JFK. Basically, basically the Washington Post, the New York Times, uh, uh, are widely quoted and nobody else is. Does that uh, bother the, you? The, yes. I broke the Iran-Contra story uh, seven months before the Washington Post or the New York Times picked it up. When they pick it up, it becomes front page news. It's a whole other show. And I we, thought, do we have the facts of the Iran-Contra story? Uh, well, all of them. But, uh, mm -hmm. but the Iran-Contra story, if it was news in November of 1986, it certainly was news in April of 1986 when Dale Van Atta and I published it. Our guest has been America's premier investigative journalist, Jack Anderson. Jack's new book, his first novel, Control, a frightening thriller of what may indeed be happening, Control of Our Media by Foreign Interest. Zebra Books, it's on the stands now. And Jack, thank you so much for joining us. I've enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll have you again. Don't go away. Next up, Open Phone 88. We'll talk about, well, your favorite things, anything you want to get off your chest, 703-685-2177. Dirk Van for Larry on the Larry King Show Mutual Broadcasting System.